Hi guys, my name is Layla Sophia. I am an artist and fine jewelry designer. If you like contemporary fine jewelry, if you like luxury handbags, all things interiors, then I have some fun videos for you. You guys, I can't even believe it. I realize it's been quite some time since I've done my updated everyday jewelry collection. Honestly, I was so embarrassed to say this, I think for a long time, but I feel like I'm gonna be more proudly saying that 99.9% .9 of my pieces that I wear on a daily basis are from my own brand, Layla Sophia, because honestly, baby Sophia would be so proud, would be so proud, would be so grateful. And so honestly, I'm honored to be able to share most of my collection with you guys in the form of what I wear every single day. But first and foremost, if you guys are new here, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see you in all of my future videos. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Layla Sophia Jewelry. I put out videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And so I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Okay, as I said, but only my, you know, every people who watch every nook and cranny of every video will remember me saying this, but I was waiting for a couple new pieces that I had in the in the works to be able to do this video. And let's go, you know, t it's not like head to toe, but ears to fingers, I guess, in the order. But on my ears, which I do have my little hair tucked out today, but I'll tuck it in for this. I have been wearing, first of all, when I tell you, my very original ear cuff that I made, oh my goodness, like three and a half years ago for my line called the Oobdi Eternal Ear Cuff. It comes in a large size and a small size. That's what most of my clients have and purchase and are probably interested in. It's what my brother and most of my friends, my family members purchase most often. However, exactly a year ago, a little over a year ago, but essentially a year ago last winter, I made this collection as a part of my blue collection inspired by Issa Weira. And for those of you guys who don't know, first of all, my line, Lila Sophia Jewelry, is all inspired by my own Moroccan heritage. My family all lives in America, Morocco. But it, totally, honestly, I've said this a lot before. I have to admit, my favorite city in the entire world is Issa Weira. I mean, Marrakesh has a very special place in my heart. That's where my grandparents are from. That's where my entire dad's side of the family lives pretty much still to this day. But when I tell you Issa, we are the first time I went I was 19 and I said I'm home I, it, like it's just so incredibly beautiful also I'm an ocean girl even though I'm an earth sign your sign usually needs the opposite of you so earth is water and I just feel like I crave the water so the ocean in Issa Weir is just so incredible. And so long story short, based off of that collection, I made these two ear cuffs, which I wear every day. I've been wearing the large nonstop for literally the last year. You guys know a lot of my early collections are very organic. I use a lot of kind of raw, unpolished gold. And this was the first collection where I really introduced smooth gold. Again, very, you know, cliche artist brain inspired by the ocean. And so these ear cuffs, I made perfectly polished, but I still made them very organic because I just sculpted them by hand. And I've been wearing the large so much because that is the one ear cuff I've ever found in my life. And I've worked in this industry for a very, very long time where you don't have to take it off. I have not taken this off to sleep or to shower or whatever for literally the last year I take it off, you know, to clean. But that's a different story, but that's by choice. And it's just amazing to have something where you can go to the gym and not be worried if your ear cuff is gonna fall off. And then I've been wanting to make myself the small one, which again, my brother wears every day. He wears the Oobdi and the Wave, which I love so much. The large and the small stacked, I just think are such a vibe. I've been loving this. I literally just made it for myself like this last week. So it's crazy. I've gone so minimally with my ears. I think I just have two little earrings in and my ear cuffs. And then on to the main event, which I think is always my neck stack probably. Again, since I started working in the fine jewelry industry here in New York, when I was 19 years old, 11 years ago, the neck stack was probably what I poured my heart and my soul into. Rings are like my passion project, but the neck stack, I don't, I wouldn't go anywhere without. And it's crazy because it's changed so much. There are times where you guys have seen me and I have like seven, necklaces on. I'm feeling more minimal these days, especially since I made my jumbo epithet medallion, which I named the epithet medallion because I think it's really cool to have something that doesn't have to just be a name piece. It can absolutely have your name. Of course, I made mine with Layla because what else would I put on the first one that I made? But I thought it was really cool to have the option to, first of all, you can do anything. My mother just got a really beautiful initial S, which 
is very meaningful in her whole family, her last name, her first name, her siblings' names, my name, all start with an S. And so that's extremely meaningful, but I've also done some for clients that have a really beautiful descriptive word. You could even do a small phrase. I thought it would be fun to kind of open up the nameplate world, but have it also be totally up to you and not just have to put your name. Although that's absolutely just as beautiful, but it's really fun to have kind of a cool descriptive word of yourself. You could do it double-sided. You could do it just on the one side like I have. And when I tell you, like, which I'll show you in one second, the very first piece that I made for my collection, my Akam Wise Amulet, which again is probably the most meaningful piece. It's inspired all by my grandmother's facial tattoos. Those of you guys who don't know, there is a beautiful kind of, you know, sadly no longer present tradition of tattooing women's faces, specifically just women's faces in Amazigh culture. So that kind of spans a lot of North Africa and especially Morocco. And when I met my grandmother for the first time when I was 19, almost 20, I was like awestruck by how beautiful and how faded and how subtle her own adornments were. And so my entire first collection is made off of them. And I wore my Akam Wise amulet straight for three and a half years. And I didn't ever think I was gonna replace it with something, not replace it, but not wear it as like the base of my stack. And I'm shocked that I finally made a piece, kind of like the most simple piece, honestly, that I've ever made that really replaced it. The second I made it, I thought I'd wear it as a bracelet and I put it on my neck and I said, it's, it's found a tome. It's found a tome. It just felt so right. I have not taken her off since. I'm obsessed. I love it so much. It's honestly really probably the piece that I've been looking for for such a long time. And again, even though I probably have been like embarrassed to say that in the past, to be able to finally like take my time and make something that satisfies that kind of vision that I've had for like, when I tell you eight or nine years of wanting like a really chunky, really beautiful, yet subtle enough to actually wear and not have to take off medallion, it's kind of a dream come true. And I just hope to be an advocate for you guys also doing that in your own way. It's not to be jewelry, obviously, but in, in many, many, many different ways, I think that that rule can apply to all of us. One of the couple pieces that I have not made, which one day maybe I'll figure something out for kind of the base of my stack or the anchor of my stack, let's say. I do have a very, very, very thin herringbone chain, which if you know you know, this is gonna be a throwback. I used to live downtown in Soho for like 12 years and you know, many, many perks of living down there other than how wildly crowded it got to be and which is the reason I'm no longer there. There are some incredible resources at your fingertips and popular jewelry and new top jewelry. I forgot the name for a second, but I think it's called new top, right? Popular jewelry, which everybody knows. Aesop Rocky and FK Twigs have a really good music video there. I highly recommend. I'll see if I can find it and link it below, but if you know, you know. And New Top, both of them, they're like kind of wholesale gold places. And so a lot of, you know, musicians, a lot of rappers will get their jewelry there. And it was just like a whole thing, probably again, like five years ago. I've bought many pieces. I've bought many gifts. I've bought many pieces from New Top and Popular Jewelry. Prices are still pretty amazing, even with the you're not even going to talk about the astronomical rise in the price of gold in the last couple weeks. Even with that, their prices are still really good. And so this is a very, very long story to tell you where I got my herringbone chain from. You can find them on Etsy. You can find them on eBay if you're lucky enough to be around another kind of similar wholesale jewelry designer or jewelry store. Definitely check out the prices on their herringbone chains. Everybody's scared of how they wear mine because I've never taken it off and I've had it for six-ish years. Where the clasp is looks pretty rough, but the whole rest of it looks fine. And so it's okay to wear every day. And then I also anchor my little necklace stack always with a really cool curved thorn piece from my Ubdi Eternal collection. It's very simple. Again, kind of my early carving days where I really wanted to make everything inspired by the Atlas Mountain. So it's rough. It looks like it was kind of just plucked from the Atlas Mountains. Think, you know, desert gardens. Very cliche in this video. And then for one of the more polished yet still very organic pieces, my large calla lily necklace. I don't, something about like, it's so funny because even though I have, I have to look how many pieces I've made over my career, my only four year long career, but still. However many pieces that I've made, it's funny because I don't always get so drawn to wanting one myself, to wanting to wear that. I'm sure so many other designers relate, you know? It's like Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen very specifically <laughs> wear only certain pieces from their own collections. And I guess I do the same thing. I had no idea, but when I made this piece, 
you guys know it's a very 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 meaningful collection to me my bouquet collection was inspired by my aunt who passed away almost seven and a half years ago which is very crazy to think about and she used to just bring flowers to my house, used to send me flowers kind of on a whim randomly. And I think of her when I think of flowers, especially dried flowers. I still have the last bouquet that she sent me. It's very sad looking, so I'm not gonna show it, but it's extremely meaningful to me. And I, out of my want to preserve that, I was like, I'm just gonna make my own bouquet. I'm gonna make them in gold. And so every time someone gifts something, someone gifts a piece to themselves, when I wear one, it feels like, bringing a little bit of that memory back, bringing a little bit of that beauty back into the world. And so that's what I think about it. And I hope, again, everybody can kind of interpret that in their own way. So I've been wearing my large calla lily necklace for, again, over a year when I came out with that collection at first, and which is a beautiful transition to my bangle stack, which I guess will go right hand to left hand because this is my newest addition. It took me a while to add this as a bracelet, but, I think in September, right after my birthday, I was like, okay, it's funny. This piece has gotten more comments or more people in my comments have told me that they love this piece over anything else. And I was like, maybe I need to wear one. I, you're inspiring me about my own <laughs> line, which was again, wild to say, but also really beautiful. And so I added this Calla Lily bracelet onto my stack again, exactly six months ago and I've been loving it. It's so organic. It's it's funny because I really love flowers, even though I know I don't dress very femininely. So I think it's kind of, it's, it's the balance for me. And I just love the way that it looks on my stack, which again, brings me to my Just on Clo, which I do have an entire video of, as I'm saying that I love flowers and also I don't wear flowers. I have flower tattoos. So anyway, yep, that was, I just realized that while I was looking in the viewfinder. Anyway, is back to the task at hand. My Just on Clo has literally not left my hand. When did my brother and his wife get married? Five and a half years ago. Hasn't left five and a half years. Almost, honestly, six years. I think I got it exactly six years ago, maybe even this month. At Anchor Point, I got it right before my brother got married. And so, safe to say, I'm obsessed with it. I think it is a really good anchor, even though I will most likely not buy any more. I, that's a big statement. Will I ever buy another bracelet from a bigger house? I'm not sure, but I honestly maybe don't think so. And so it's kind of nice to have this be the one because when I tell you I, I dreamt about this for at least eight years, like since high school before actually getting this. And when I got it, I was like, done. I felt so, I just felt like it was meant to be on my wrist. And the price has gone up, like I think $1,300 since I got it. So, you know, shouldn't exactly look at these things as, investment value, but this was a good investment if I had to sell it for some reason. And my left hand, I have to say, is probably the one that I'm most proud of, that I love the most. It just makes me happy every day. When I look down, I have not taken off most of these bracelets. One I made a year and a half ago, which was the most recent. Prior to that, probably the last three and a half years, I've been obsessed with my little Oobdi Eternal stack. I have three pieces. The one in the middle is kind of hard to see when it's actually worn, but you guys will be seeing the product image of it. My most recent one in the middle is the knife edge style called the Mugador bracelet. Again, as it, even though it's kind of opposite, it's the more rough, you know, more unpolished piece in my blue collection. Isawira used to be essentially a fort. It had several battles or wars fought either in it or because of it. It used to be called Mugador, and so I called it the Mugador Knife Edge. Angle, because when you think of Morocco, I'm sure you think of a lot of things, but also daggers are a huge thing. And so instead of making an actual dagger piece, I took a little bit of that silhouette and just did a cool knife edge bangle, which is really nice because it adds a little bit of layering to my bangle stack. Now I'm getting very technical. Let's get on with the pretty stuff, Sophia. And then this is really cool. My top and bottom bangles are the same, but when I made this, first of all, I was instantly obsessed. My Oobdi Eternal bangle, my original bangle. I had a men's jewelry store. Also, I just have a lot of men in my life. I have mostly male friends. I have three brothers. And long story short, I just have a lot of men around me. And I was like, how can I get this to fit 
every size, shape, wrist, and hand to still go over your hand, but still look really cool as a bangle and not have it fall off. And so I literally just cut it, but then instead of having it just be plain, I added two rubies personally. I love the one, I have one with diamonds, I can do emeralds, sapphires, whatever color stone you like, black diamonds, brown diamonds, whatever, but so funny, in a girl's wardrobe who does not have any color, I actually really love these two little rubies. Very random, but I love them. And then lastly, rings. Rings is the hardest because rings are the one thing out of everything I've shown that I actually switch every day or, and, you know, every occasion, let's say. And they're also the one thing that I take on and off, so it gives me that flexibility, but as soon as I made this ring for myself, I'm kind of shocked as to how much I've been wearing it. This is from my little like one-off Valentine's Day piece that I just released. This is the Loved Signet Ring. It is truly like, I can't believe how much I love it. And I just pair it with the tiniest little EF Collection ring, which I again probably got like eight years ago that I didn't wear for a very long time. And I love a diamond band with a signet ring for some, I don't even know where I saw that first so many years ago or how I thought of that, but I love it. It anchors it and it gives it a little bit more of a different edge because signet rings are signet rings, they're everywhere. So adding a little band to it, I kind of love it so subtle, but it's just, even though these diamonds are so teeny tiny, it's just really cute and it gets a little bit of sparkle to a big chunk of gold. Because prior, and, and why it's so shocking to me that I've been wearing this ring is because prior to this ring, again, Every video past the last six weeks, you will see me having worn my Alana Heaven ring. Like literally when I made this piece, I said, this is, this is, this is the most me piece I've ever made. It is inspired by a very, very, very cool ancient, I think Byzantine or Roman ring that I have loved for years and years and years. And I obviously have never, you know, found another designer who's done one. And so I was like, I'm gonna make it very in a very similar shape, but add again a very Amazigh tattoo or art pattern onto it. This is a pattern that can be found on a lot of Moroccan Amazigh rugs. Whenever you see a pattern like this, it's essentially the Moroccan or Amazigh version of an evil eye. So it's really just protective, but it took a lot for me to not be wearing this ring as much. And I'm shocked that this is the one, the signet is the one that kind of not replaced it because I will be wearing this for the rest of my life, but it's a bit much when I wear them both at the same time. However, I still love them. Very similarly, wasn't expecting this, but as soon as I made my calla lily ring right here on my middle finger, I, I literally have not taken it off. I love it so much. And again, it's kind of nice to have the three motifs, but in different vibes, because I hope it doesn't look too, I'm sure it looks repetitive, but they're subtle enough to not look so repetitive, but the ring, literally, I remember my mother also looking at it for the first time, and she may have cried a little bit. I think it's just so meaningful. Lily is what the name Susan means, which was my aunt's name, and so these are, again, just very, very meaningful pieces, which I hope one can interpret in their own life. So I love my little cow lily ring. And then this little stack right here, I switch up quite a lot. I made this ring for myself exactly a year ago, apparently last year. I had some <laughs> very significant collections or pieces made, but I had been wanting to make myself a chunky diamond piece for a long time, you know? There is no partner nor wedding in the future for me, at least very near future, it seems. And so I was like, I am turning 30. I'm making myself a diamond ring, okay? And I did just that. And this is a really cool, almost brown, almost champagne cushion cut diamond that is ethically sourced. And so I absolutely love it. And I just encased it in a whole bunch of gold. It's still very me, still very organic. But what this ch chunky, gigantic diamond is inspired by is one of the very first rings that I made for my collection, which again is my Oobdi Eternal collection inspired by the Atlas Mountains. So you can kind of see that mountainous shape really switch off between which duo I wear. And I also will very often wear this little pink diamond ring on my pinky, which I love so much. That is one of the most fun pink diamonds I've ever seen. I know they look a little purple, but that's just how they're labeled. I don't know, in the jewelry industry and I, I really switch between these a lot. And if you've stayed with me this whole time, again, as I say, you're my family. I love you. You're my friend, you're my family. 
we're in this together. I appreciate you guys so much. I have a very brand new piece to show you, which is a piece which is an older piece, but I've been saying for such a long time, you guys who know me, I've been, I've been saying it for such a long time and sometimes I just need to, you know, cough it up to do what I say that I want to do. I've been wanting to make a piece in solid 22 karat gold. Since I started my collection, I had a bunch of people at first be like, eh, I don't know, I don't, like, you know, it's a very niche, <laughs> as if fine jewelry, as if my end of the fine jewelry world, the very organic, handmade, kind of niche fine jewelry isn't niche enough. I know I'm repeating myself so much. 22 karat is even more niche. And so I started off with 14. That's really, you know, the base of my collection. But I love 22 karat so much that I finally figured out the very best piece to create my first 22 karat ring with. And so even though you've already been seeing it, my little pinky ring, one of my original Ubdi Eternal rings, I said, I love this ring so, so, so much. I thought it was the perfect piece to finally do in 22 karat. I'm dying to see how it wears because we're not about to have a whole gold lesson right now, but 22 karat pure gold is 24 karat and 22 karat is almost as pure as jewelers are really willing to work with because it is so soft. So whenever you see 22 karat, it'll come looking one way. And all of a sudden, once you wear it a bunch, especially the more you wear it, it will look totally different. And so I'm so curious to see how this bad boy wears, especially because of how I design my pieces. It's just so organic. So I have no idea if it's gonna kind of like smooth out and polish itself or if it's gonna get even more banged up, but I thought this was the perfect, oh my God, as I'm looking at it, I'm kind of obsessed. I thought that it was the perfect piece to experiment with at first. And you guys, that has been my apparently very lengthy, let's say very in-depth, everyday jewelry collection. These are the pieces that when I, you, you already know, I can't even make this up, I wear, every single day, never take off, and I love so, 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 so much. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I truly could not wait to see you in my next one. Bye, guys.